states to do something because we obey our constitution and our interests and our rights. But you've, I think you've, you've heard President Morsi's comments about Zionists and Israelis being bloodsuckers uh, and descendants of apes and pigs. Do you think it's wise to send them F-16s and Abram tanks? I think those comments are reprehensible, and those comments uh, set back the possibilities of uh, uh, working towards mutual uh, issues of mutual interest. Uh, they are degrading comments. They're unacceptable by anybody's standard. And I think they have to appropriately be apologized for it. They President, only understand strength. Let, let me you just keep finish. sending them weapons, they're not going to change their behavior. Let me just finish. President Morsi, uh, President Morsi has issued two statements uh, to clarify uh, those comments. And we had a group of senators who met with him just the other day who spent a good part of their conversation in relatively heated discussion with him about it. But not everything... You know, this is always the complication in dealings uh, in the international sector. Not everything lends itself to a simple clarity, a black, white, this, that, every time. We have critical interests with Egypt. Critical interests with Egypt. Egypt has thus far supported and lived by the peace agreement with Israel. Uh, Israel uh, and, and, and has taken steps to begin to deal with the problem of security in the Sinai. Those are vital to us and to our national interest and to the security of Israel. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they have followed through on the promise to have an election. You know, but I know things are not black and white, but, but the thing... just, you know, they've had an election. They've, they've had a constitutional process. There's another election that is coming up shortly for the lower house. The fact that sometimes other countries elect somebody that you don't completely agree with doesn't give us permission to walk away from their election. But this has been our problem with our foreign policy for decades, Republican and Democrat. We funded bin Laden. We funded the Mujahideen. We were in favor of radical jihad because they were the enemy of our enemy. We've done this so often. I see these weapons coming back to threaten Israel. I see support for Syrian rebels coming back to, to threaten Israel as well. well as I you see know, problems Senator, with this. As you know, Senator, in any of the arms sales that the United States has ever engaged in in that part of the world, uh, there is always a measure, a test, which is applied with respect to a qualitative difference in any of those weapons with respect to uh, Israel's defense and security. And we do not sell weapons and will not sell weapons that might upset that qualitative balance. Yes, yeah, so we sell 20 F-16s to Egypt. We've got to give 25 to Israel. Sounds like we're fueling an arms race. Why don't we just not give any weapons to Israel's enemies? That certainly save us a lot of money and might make it safer for Israel. One well, better, better yet, until we, are re until we are at that moment where that might be achievable, uh, maybe it would be better to try to make peace. One final question, if I could, Mr. Chairman, it's very short. Would you uh, consider supporting conditioning aid to Pakistan on the release of Dr. Shaquille Afridi? I'm afraid if we don't support informants who have helped us, we're not going to get many more informants. Well, <laughs> let, me, let me speak to that. First of all, I have talked directly to President Zadari, and I have talked directly to General Kayani about Dr. Afridi. And like most Americans, I find it, as you do, uh, incomprehensible.